Hello, I'm Denton Davidson, Senior Editor for Gold Derby, here with two-time Screen Actors Guild Award winner Susan Kalechi Watson, who plays Beth on NBC's This Is Us. Susan, I'm just going to start off by saying you're in the midst of the show ending. You know, you had your last day on set, but there's still all this press and everyone's talking about it. The finale is about to air. So where are you in processing the closure and the end of this phenomenon? You know, I'm I'm still in the, you know, I can't believe we're not going back to set mode. Um, you know, still trying to figure out what that even feels like, you know, for the past six years. Um, I'm like the one cast member that's been traveling back and forth. And, and so I'm always like used to a time where it's like I have to pack everything up and go. And so it's really interesting, like when they called a final, you know, it was a final rap call on, on me, that was like, I don't know, it's hard to describe. I couldn't believe it. I was still, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around it. And you got a Critics' Choice Awards nomination earlier this year. Um, it was your second one. So that wasn't a bad way to start the year by any, by any <laughs> means. What is that like when you get, your whole cast has really been embraced by, you know, these awards shows, which is not always the case for network TV, especially. So what does that mean um, for you as a cast, but for you in particular, um, to be singled out like among six or seven women when, TV is so huge right now. It's there's there's so many great roles. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, it's amazing the way that people have embraced the character, embraced the show, um, and that uh, you know, I'm, I'm among such you know, a tremendous cast. It's I always feels like I'm representing. You know what I mean for for everybody. It's it's just such an ensemble show. Um, and also like for network TV, it, it does mean a lot. You know, I can, you see the tide, you see the tide changing, you see the trend is much more towards streaming and you know, all of the, um, the, the new, you know, they're sort of the new networks or the streamers, right? And um, the fact that we've been able to keep um, our show, uh, you know, amongst those names that, you know, are called yearly, at these events and award shows, you know, it's it says a lot about um, what the show means to people. It says a lot about, you know, the show sort of maintaining its integrity throughout the six years. And um, not for nothing, it also gives us a chance to kind of hang out right. <laughs> at the fancy party, <laughs> uh, which, is, which is always nice, you know? It's always great to be invited. <clears throat> I spoke with Chris Sullivan recently, and he directed you in an episode called Heart and Soul. And this is the one where um, Deja tells Randall and Beth she's moving to, to live with Malik. And- um, oh, Right, yes, yes, and, yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh -huh. And so they're curious, Susan's um, Beth's sort of talking Randall off the ledge, but um, it was just fun to speak with him being an actor that got to, to direct an episode he spoke of you and he said, you're like a master technician, the way like you have a, a look and the deliver a line. So I'm curious about, you know, that that sort of comedy that you pull into the drama. To me, it always, like, maybe this is biased because she's plays your mother, but to me, it's very Claire Huxtable when I see that. Um, but where does that come from that, that, is that training? Is that bringing your personality in or, or what is that? I think it's probably, my dad, a lot of my dad, my dad is probably the funniest guy I know, at least one of them, him and my uncle, uh, I have an uncle Sonny who's just they're hilarious. And they knew how to tell a story and they understood timing. And um, listen, I, I was able, my great grandmother was like this. I was, I just sat and absorbed, you know, my brother were really funny. I have a very funny family, my cousins and you know, and so, I, you know, we all had a humor about us and everybody has their own particular type of sense of humor. But whenever it comes to comic timing, I think about my family, I think about my dad, because he's also the type of person that you could see the punchline coming. You almost know what he's going to say, but the way he lands the plane is what makes you laugh. It's what makes you bust out or he'll be so unexpected with the way that he drops a, a punchline. It comes out of nowhere and it just has it. And so there's a certain rhythm to it that I think I've just absorbed growing up that I totally, I totally attribute to them and to him. 
And there seems like there's a real sense of learning on the set. Um, multiple actors have, you know, gotten behind the camera to direct. You yeah. co-wrote an episode, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. But what is it like to be an actor being directed by actors that that you work with? Does that does it change the dynamic or not really? I tell them, don't look me in the eyes and don't give me notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chris Sullivan got the business. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, it's fun. You know, it's great because they get it. And so they talk to you in a way that, you know, feels like actors with actors. And and it's fun to see them take the to, to see them take the lead. It's fun to see the dynamic of a set when they do take the lead. I remember when Chris did, I remember the set was like quite calm and sort of quiet and sort of you know, it felt very sort of peaceful and patient and that's a lot of his characteristics, right? So it's a, a nice opportunity for everybody to get to spread their wings in different ways. When I wrote, it was an amazing opportunity to watch, to watch the cast do their thing with words that, you know, obviously had a big part in writing, but to watch what they did with it. Um, it's always a, a interesting learning uh, moment to produce on a show. And I love, you know, that's something else that I do that I love to do. Um, but I like being behind the camera. I, but I learned that I don't like directing. So directing wasn't necessarily for me, but writing and then getting subsequently to produce an episode was, was a really amazing thing too. And I thought it was like less work to produce, to write. Turns out, same kind of work, <laughs> but <laughs> different role. Right. Um, and that, and that was just fine with me too. I just, I feel like there, everybody learned what they, another thing that they were good at or another thing they enjoyed or another thing they wanted to explore. And when you have an opportunity like this on a show like this and somebody says, yeah, do it or, or ask, you know, I'd encourage other ask, actors to ask if they could do it because you shouldn't leave a show um, without having done that if that's something you want to do, either direct or, you know, write or, or just like shadow somebody in whatever job that they're doing that you think is interesting. And I'd also like to have a camera to tell you the truth. That I'm waiting for a show where somebody lets me DP. <laughs> 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 or like a camera, seriously, I would love to do that, yeah. Um, and so I wanna talk about Little Island Girl part two because this is, this is one that you co-wrote. Um, Beth is really sort of mentoring some young woman that's similar to her in a lot of ways. I'm curious how you got pulled into writing that, um, how that whole situation works behind the scenes of, you know, do they come to you and say, you know, this is gonna be Beth focused. Do you wanna have your say in it? Um, and just what, what that process was like for you? Well, I had um, mentioned to Dan a few years earlier that I would love to, to write, I knew that directing was an option, but I found out that possibly writing could be an option. And so um, I went to him a few years before and said that, you know, I would love to do that. And, and um, he's read some of the stuff, other things I've written. And so when season six came, he called me up and he said, hey, you know, do you wanna, I know you're in the middle of, I was doing Shakespeare in the Park at the time. He's like, I know you're in the middle of that, but do you wanna start writing? And I said, absolutely. And I was like, um, so happy that he, you know, excited that he called and asked. And also he set it up, um, me up with Ebony to co-write and she wrote the original Island Girl um, and um, did an amazing job and was nominated for all types of awards for it. And she's just such an excellent writer. So it was really a great opportunity to partner with her um, to not just be thrown out there into, you know, into the wolves, but it was like somebody was able to kind of mentor me as I went. But we, we ended up splitting the episode and going off and writing. And then we came back together and, and then wrote it all together. And then I didn't realize the writing process took, it takes weeks. We started in August. We really didn't complete the full episode until like October, because there's so many different tweaks. There's so many different passes. Then Dan does a pass and you know you have the whole writer's room read it. And I was sitting in on these uh, writer's room Zooms where people are turning the page and then saying everything that works on this page and what doesn't work on that page and what does this mean and you know and and um thankfully that stuff is fine with me like you know i can take the critique but it's you know it's it's it can be 
um, really intense bringing a, a one episode all the way to the screen. But I loved being a part of it. I loved, you know, sitting in on locations meetings and props meetings and um, helping to choose which actors, you know, from audition tapes and all of that kind of stuff. So I feel like I got a really full experience by just writing. I love young Beth's storyline in that where she's, you know, sort of put face to face with a teacher that kind of crushed her spirits and in, in some sort of way. I was curious if you ever had that happen when you were younger, did, you know, you don't have to name names, but did you oh, have, any, names. did you have I'm anyone when you were younger? Cause I can relate to that of, of sort of like dampering something that you love. I think so. And there, it was a few dance teachers probably. And if I could remember her name, I'd mention it. Cause if you're bold enough to do it, you should be bold enough to be mentioned. Um, but I, I don't remember her name and that says a lot too, but she, <laughs> She was discouraging, you know, in, in ways that weren't necessary, I felt like, um, Beyond from, from just mistakes that I've made. Yeah, as I was a dancer when I was young. And I was actually, um, you know, pretty, I, I showed up, I was, I was in the top dance group, I was a competitor, I was all of those things. And it was like, I, I think I made one little mistake and didn't show up on time, we, we missed a rehearsal or something because we didn't realize it was scheduled. And she really took it out on me. And then she really kind of minimized my role and, you know, the attention that I got and all this stuff. It was just unnecessary, you know? And it was, it was dampening. And I remember leaving that dance studio and then not going back to dance really until I went to Howard. And then, um, you know, getting such a different appreciation of dance, a different appreciation of dance, also through all different types of, um physical form you know they you didn't have to be skinny and tall and lean and all these things like you can have a butt you can have breasts you can have curves you can have all of these things um uh, short tall whatever and be phenomenal dancers and that just opens up your mind in a whole different way so there were limitations that were also being put on me because of the way that my body um my body structure was and so i really do did understand that and understand it I understood where Beth was coming from in terms of wanting to create a new type of structure, a new way of being and um, in the dance, sort of in the dance realm. And I understand that it, it has, there's strict, there has to be strict, it has to be sort of, you know, to create greatness, there has to be these rules and parameters that are set up for discipline. But there's on some unnecessary stuff that happens too, that I think that this, this really spoke to on a dance level, but also a larger level. You could bring it into, you know, relate to it sort of in any, in any career really, where you feel like somebody has come, like ostracized you or has made you feel um, bad about yourself or less than because of something you, you may not have been able to control. And I know about a year ago, you were going into Merry Wives and so how did how did the, how did returning to theater feel and can we expect more of that from you now in the future or can we expect some comedy from you you know what's what's next um yeah i definitely theater is um one of my first loves I, it's one of my great loves and you know doing shakespeare in the park uh, the iconic central park delacorte theater was just a dream come true and to get to do Merry Wives and to do the, the beautiful translation that Jocelyn B.O. did that set, was set in Harlem among, amongst the Nigerian and Ghanaian community and it be a comedy was just uh, fun. And I had the most beautiful, most amazing cast uh, for that show and who are all just good friends now. And we just had an amazing time being the first show back after, after quarantine wow. and after, um, COVID, we were the very first theater production. So they, they made a um, documentary out of it on HBO called Reopening Night and um, basically just chronicling all of what we've gone through. And I mean, theater is such a big part of my life. Film is as well. And that, uh, you know, that's something that um, I will be doing more of and, and um, limited series. So, you know, there are a few things that are, that are coming up and once they get announced, I could talk about them, but it's, it's really a great opportunity now to kind of just do different things, 
you know, and that that's fun and exciting. And comedy has always been a great love of mine. So it's something that I do want to do. And I think it'll be really fun to do, you know, just a straight comedy. Um, it's yeah, it, that would be a joy. And Gold Derby recently published a list of the 25 greatest TV families in history and the Pearsons are among them. So I'm just curious, you know, what has it meant to you? What is the show, you know, what has the show done for your life? You know, how much has, when you, when you sit back now and you're like, wow, my life before the show, after the show, you know, what has this done for you? Well, I do think that it's a created a, a, a real space to create, like to do something meaningful mm. and something that you knew was meaningful to people in a very deep way. And, you know, as, as an artist, like you, you hope for that. You hope that I'm doing something that means something to someone. You know how much it means to you, but you want it to land in the world in a way that people embrace it. And this show has really done that on all levels um, and really fulfilled that space in me. And it's also made me want to do more of that, you know? So it's also showed me that people can be in this business and be a showrunner and, or be a writer or be an amazing actor and just be good people. And mm. they, it's, it's been um, such a journey. And to watch people from day one work just as hard um, on day, you know, 601, you know, from season one to season six, work just as hard um, to put the show together and, and, and try to really bring, you know, the Pearson family um, to life. It just really has shown me so much, you know, it's, it's meant a lot to see that. And to be a part of that, you know, has been just a really wonderful thing. Well, Susan, it was such a pleasure for all of us to watch you and the entire cast over the last six seasons. I can't wait to see what's next for you. If there's any justice, we'll see you on that Emmy's red carpet. So I don't know. They need to catch up. Come on, now it's time. Um, so uh, we'll hopefully see you there. And thanks so much for chatting with Gold Derby today. Oh, thank you, Denton. It's great chatting with you.